Hopefully it won't be too much longer and we'll have another update video. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. We will talk soon. Bye for now. So we are back here in the layout guys and uh, it certainly has been a very long time in between videos. I've got to admit the, uh, the time has passed very very quickly and I had no idea it's actually been from what I can understand almost five, well, four months, five months since my last video so greatly apologize about that. As you can see from the intro I've been incredibly busy there's been a lot of stuff happening in my life. Uh, one of it being obviously my health. Mentally, I'm perfectly fine. No concerns there at all. But there are a few things that I've been getting uh, looked at, etc., um, and getting dealt with. So it takes me time away from the actual layout itself. Um, we have been busy in the layout uh, as of late, uh, which has been good, um, despite work and a lot of other things impacting uh, basically life in general, really. Um, so, but otherwise, enough talk, let's get into the layout. Uh, now, what's been happening is I've been putting in the sub road base. I've put a few uh, uh, scene blocks in as well at the moment. So there's a lot of good, info, a lot of good stuff here going on. Um, uh, with progress however I have encountered a bit of an error or an issue which I want to share with you guys so you don't make the same problem as well um, particularly if you're building a large layout like I am so anyway let's get into it and let's discuss what's uh, what the plan is and you'll get a good visual understanding on what's happening around with the layout what the future plans are and where do we go to from here so see you at the layout Okay, now first off what we'll do is we'll start off right here with the fiddle yard itself. So, not sure uh, where we left off on the last video itself, but the fiddle yard uh, underlay that we actually see right here is uh, the underlay is in place, etc. No track is actually laid as yet because uh, I'm getting all the foundations in, uh, all the sub road, best, uh, sub road base in here. And um, taking a look at the yard, it's going to be quite decent. Uh, we're looking at uh, what are we about two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve lines. Each one of these lines is approximately um, around about three, four point five meters each, I think, in uh, in length. So very, very long. Uh, plenty of good storage, etc. We'll talk about more about the footy yard later when I go to actually put it in. At the moment, I've got the frame uh, for my actual uh, lift out section. Uh, just sitting here at the actual moment. The idea is this is going to be a lift up section uh, as it swings up and not in use and then drops back down again. So a good solid bit of bench work right there. Then goes around the actual curve right here and then it gets onto the layout. So essentially there's going to be a dividing wall right here where the trains come onto scene. Now here uh, is the beginnings of Binnegar. Uh, or bind guard depending on how you want to actually pronounce it or twist your uh, tongue now when uh, drawing this up you can see on the boards here I've got a lot of scribble a lot of texture marks etc and what I've actually done is I've got some real plans of vinegar uh, measure them to scale and put them in now um, when looking at it yep it was going to fit the whole length of my actual wall going from here all the way over to here etc and one thing I've completely forgotten about was I didn't uh, account for my curves to go in here. Same with the other end over here. So while Binnega was gonna fit in completely from the station platform all the way to the actual end of the goods yard and in true scale, as soon as I put the uh, curves in, it wasn't going to fit. So in the end, I had to make a bit of a choice and a sacrifice, hence why there's extra scribbles, etc. So the, um, the initial plan was uh, you know, I shifted the goods yard, the goods shed and a few other things and it, just to squash it all down so it wasn't in scale and it didn't look right. I wasn't happy with it so I thought, right, something needs to change. I need to, need to cut off the, the goods yard a bit to a point where it's curved around and, and turns out however and keep the station and everything else as it's supposed to be or I chopped the station off and unfortunately the station got the chop. Um, but it's created a bit of an unforeseen benefit. So essentially what we're looking at here is where the platforms would actually be um, along with the measurements with the gates and everything else. Um, now looking at this, um, 
what we're dealing with here is I'm going to have an excellent, obviously this is where the uh, the train will come onto the scene, but there's going to be a wonderful, perfect opportunity to have the station finish about here, and that will create my view block for the train to actually come onto the scene. So I'm actually happy with how that's actually going to work. On top of that as well, with those that are familiar with Binninger, right here we've got essentially the old station master's house, which is a very unique um, type of building itself. Now, as you can see with some of the markings here and here, um, some of them have been uh, faded out, etc., but they are in place. Things are measured to scale, etc. Excuse this red line, this is not uh, part of it, but we've essentially got the station master's building right here. The good shed itself, which is this big unit right here, this is a very old um, stone shed which used to be serving the, uh, the I think it was a cider or um, bitter line, uh, and a narrow gauge train many, many years ago it used to actually run in to transfer the stock. Um, after a period of time it was removed and then the train, uh, this was then converted into just a straight goods uh, yard itself. Now the one thing I'm going to do as well, and this will illustrate what I'm dealing with at the moment, I'm going to put this spirit level here so you can see what things have actually been going on. And as you can see, that's level. I mean it's a little bit to the, just a tiny little bit, but it's uh, essentially just to the the lines in there of the bench work. So anyway, so I've got the sub road base in here. So we've got the two main lines out here. This is the head shunt line, um, whatever it may have been, um, etc. So we'll continue down here. As you can see, we continue into the uh, the goods yard a bit more as well. And around here is where a lot of other freight movements used to occur. There's a bit of a platform that goes in here. Um, you know, there was cattle yards, all sorts of stuff right here. So some great shunting opportunities. And as mentioned, all in scale as well. I'll pop my little spirit level right there. And uh, yep, in the centre. So as we continue along, we then have some very nice big curves that actually curls around here. So what I'll do is I'll move over there so it's easier to see. Okay, here we are at the other end. So as you can see, this is the other view essentially into the goods yard itself. So plenty of uh, you know, shunting opportunities. We can see the locomotive way down the end there. So very far away down there, there's the crossover as well, just right here. So as we continue along here, the, tra uh, the track starts to curl around, so very gentle gradient. As we can see here, track's still level. We then go across here. Now, some of the bench work's going to drop down in places and then pick up again, depending on what's in the area. Now, this area here is going is dropped down because there is a bridge that's going to pass under here. And uh, so anyway, the tracks keep curling around. And as we can see, the you know very smooth, very long, wide, curves as we can see here for the trains to actually go around um, so you know it works very good so we curl around here still continuing on now i've put in a bit of a, a back scene board right here which i've stopped up as you can see here and the curve itself curls around and goes you know right around the peninsula so again if we want to take a look at the you know the sweeping curves they're nice and flowing there's very little in the way of straight track here on this layer with the exception of vinegar and um you know one two one or two small sections. But the sub row base is in here, looks quite good. All right, so as we come from that corner here, you can see my wiring that's currently going in here at the moment. So here's my main bus line itself. This is my DCC control panel wiring slowly going in. And as we curl around here, curls around to the actual peninsula uh, right here, which is what will be called Masbury Summit. And again, there's my spirit level right there. You can see the bubbles in the middle there, looking quite good. And with this section here, I'll bring up a, a picture or a few pictures that I've printed out to show you how this area is going to actually look like. Okay, so here's the first image that I want to actually show you. And this is to go with the actual curves of this actual layout itself. So you can see the train here coming up to the Mosbury Summit right here. And that scene is, if I can get this in place here, is going to be about here. So you can see the resemblance on what's going to occur with this image versus the track bed right here. So it's gonna be working quite good. The other thing is also, if we start looking towards the actual summit itself, so I'll get the next picture, which is this one right here. So we're almost in the same sort of vicinity except we're looking in the opposite direction. This is going to be this curve right here. So again, there's that image. There's the actual curve coming in right here. So it follows the contours of how the railway actually used to uh, exist, which is quite good. Um, so, yep, so that's the next step right there. 
As we move along through the actual summit, as we curl around, the next image is here, which you can see right here. So you can see the embankment starts to cut in a bit. We've got some stone and uh, rock on the sides. And again, that's going to be this section right here. So you can see the similarities and what's occurring right here. Now looking in uh, back this direction on where we've actually come from, you can see how it curls around and very similar. There's the actual track uh, right here looking in this general direction. So that'll come through right across here. Okay, so here we are right at the uh, pinnacle of the actual peninsula. Again, there's my spirit little with the bubble right in the middle. Now as we go around here, you can see it curves back around and back in on itself. So we've got this wonderful U shape that's going on. We've got this great view blocker right here, so the train disappears and it looks quite good. Now this section right here that we can actually see as the tra uh, track curls around right here, how that's going to look is similar to this picture here. So again, you, if you look at that picture there, you've got all the rock facing on the right hand side, etc. And you can see the train curls off or peels around to the actual left hand side. So that there will eventually be represented down there. Now we're down at that section that I was mentioning about that curve. So here's that image again for reference with the train, you know, it's coming, the track just peels off to the left there. So looking at that, that's how it's going to look right here. So looking in a different direction, obviously. So if we pivot here on the actual spot, you can see the track curls around and peels around very nicely. So now this radius of the actual track here is the equivalent of around about, I think it was 1.2, uh, about one meter, sorry, um, from the actual inner track. So one meter is very, very generous. This is going to be a wonderful, big, smooth curve going around here. Same as we go around here, the banking and everything is going to be so, so. Okay, so here we are. We curl around back around here. Again, take note, bubbles in the actual middle. Sorry, I'll take a bit of angle. There we go. So it curls around right here. It's quite good and then curls around now. This is where we start to come into um, Masbury Station right here. So you can see how the tracks curl around here to the left of uh, Binnigar itself. And that area here is going to be positioned right here on the actual corner where it comes in. So you can see the curve, it, it looks very straight almost, but there is the gentlest curve you can possibly think of as you can see right here. So if we take a look at like this image that we've got here of actual vinegar when it was in place. Look at that, it's some better light. You can see where this is going to actually look uh, when it actually gets put in place here. So looks quite good, it'll be fantastic. Um, and then as we continue down the actual line itself, we come down to here where the train will eventually back onto itself and then come back into the fiddle yard. Now, to get a bit of a look at it, that's how it will actually look coming back the other direction. So I'll put the camera in the position it's supposed to be so you can see where this view comes in. Okay, so excuse the mess right here <laughs> that you can actually see. Here's the actual image that I was referencing before where you can see the train peeling from the right. We've got a couple of good, interesting looking sheds uh, and embankments, etc. So that'll come from here, curl around and go back into the fiddle yard. Now, this is where my predicament has come in. You can see the height here of these boards. You can see the track there. And using the spirit level, which is still left over here at the moment, I've gathered it around, right around the whole layout. We've come to here. The bench work stays the same. And there's our fiddle yard. There is a height difference now between here and where the fiddle yard actually is. And this is where it should finish up. So. How the heck have I put essentially a decline or an incline, depending on how you look at it, going from here to here? And it comes down to my spirit level, and this is where I wanted to share with you. Okay, so as mentioned before, I've been using this wonderful little spirit level, which does the job quite well. You know, there's nothing complicated about it. It's just a simple spirit level with a couple of different vials in every uh, section there, depending on what angles and things you're doing. And I've been using that right around the whole layout here. However, as we've just seen over the other side there, I've got a height difference between the fiddle yard and where the bench work is. So there has been an error somewhere along the way. Now, if I've been using this the whole time, I would have thought this would have married up quite well and perfectly fine. Now, I've gone through and I've checked and checked and checked. I've wrecked my brain over it and it has basically done my head in. Now, I've found out what the actual problem is and this is where I wanted to share with you guys. So, your standard spirit levels are quite good. They're very, you know, they're, they're great at keeping things level. The problem is though, is a standard spirit level such as this one here in my hand 
does have a margin of error, which I was not aware of when I started this, nor do I know that there was a margin of error in these spirit levels. Uh, and the expected tolerance is with any standard spirit level, there is an expected difference of 10 millimeters or one centimeter every meter. So this bubble could be in the middle here, but there could be a, a difference in its angle slightly that the bubble won't really recognize, but it will then show up that over one meter, you'll have a height difference of about one centimeter. Now, that, that's quite excessive in my opinion, and especially if you've got a layout like mine where, you know, for the track to, to start at the fiddle yard and then enter the fiddle yard on the other side, we're talking about 26, 27 meters worth of bench work, where when you think of one centimeter, that can really multiply over a long distance. Hence, we've got this difference way over the other side. So I've encountered a problem of put all this great work in, etc., only to find out it's not level, which is frustrating, very, very frustrating. So this is just a standard spirit level. Now, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have used this thing. I would have gotten something far more accurate, which is what I've actually done now. So let's grab this spirit level. Let's grab my new spirit level, and we'll see what really the difference are, uh, differences are in there. Now the spirit level I've got is just a bit more expensive unit, but it is a digital one right here. Now the other thing is also, as mentioned, this spirit level here has a tolerance or an expected uh, acceptable tolerance of one uh, centimeter over every meter. This one here on the other hand is far more accurate. It has a tolerance of 0.5 millimeters per meter. So half a millimeter for every meter, there could be a difference. So that to me is far, far more acceptable and usable than this other unit right here. So let's take a look at this and see what, how far out we actually are. Okay, first things first, there is my level that I've been using and we can see that bubble is nicely in the center. Now, this is what it's like essentially across the whole bench work. It is all level, and that's why I couldn't understand why I had that difference in height. So there's the actual bubble right there. So what I'll do is I'll take this away, I'll zoom out, and I'll bring in my new spirit level that I've actually got here, which is a digital unit. So you're going to see on the display what it has here. So first things first, it'll calibrate. And as we can see here already, we've actually got a difference of 0.45 millimeters. So half a millimeter already, just in that alone. Now we can see with the actual guides right here, this end here needs to move up or this one needs to go down. So if I adjust this ever so slightly up, there we go, we're now dead center. Oop, and there's gonna be some undul uh, variances here cause I'm uh, using my hand of course, but if that's dead center, have a look at the gap that we've got here. Now this is going to occur and be replicated right across these little undulations across the whole layout. So we'll go to another area and we'll see what the... Okay, so there's the next one there. So again, we can see the bubbles in the middle with this older uh, spirit level, perfectly fine and level. So we'll zoom out of the actual uh, spirit level here and I'll put my digital unit on. 0.05 of a difference. So that's not too bad, but I've moved quite a fair distance around. I've essentially now in the corning uh, turning area as we speak. So I'll move to another area and we'll see what the difference is. Okay, so we're now in the next area of the actual uh, bench work. So I've essentially moved roughly uh, 50 centimeters to the left of where the last measurement was taken. So again, the bubble's in the middle. I'll take that away. I'll put my digital unit now in here. Move that wire out of the way. Well, we can see we've got 0.2. Again, we're completely out. In this case, this needs to move up a little bit. So there is undulations. It is not dead level, which is uh, creating my problem. And over a last vast distance, so all we've actually done so far is I've taken a couple of measurements and all I am is just over here. I've only just gone from here. I've taken one measurement here one over here and just one to the right. And you can see the differences that are already occurring with the actual bench work itself. So I'd have to adjust the heights of my actual sub row bed everywhere in order to make it level. Now, the good thing with this spirit level right here, while we can see we're actually out by a certain amount, 
The good thing is when I'm actually adjusting all this, I may not be able to see my display at the time. There is a little display up at the top here, which is fantastic. But the other thing is also I've got an audible alert. So it's telling me at the moment, like, look at, oh, sorry, that's sitting on wire there. I was going to say half a millimetre already there. So there we go, 0 0.3, 0 0.25. As I go through and adjust these things, it can give me an audible alert to tell me when it's level. Right there. So that is a sizable amount of distance. Now, that, um, I'll turn that off so it doesn't drive us nuts. So... This area here, so 0.25 of a millimetre, there's a difference of that going from here just to here. This is only 60, um, just trying to think of what the length of this actual um, spirit level actually is. I think it's 60 centimetres in length. So when you think about that, that adds up over time and that bubble, like you saw on this little unit right here, is level, but it's actually not. So. The margin of error in the standard spirit level is not sufficient nor suitable for what I'm actually doing as it's created this issue. And you know, if I can give you any word of advice, if you're going to do a large layout with a long run, do not use a standard basic spirit level like I have. Get yourself a far more accurate, get yourself a digital uh, unit that does have a very much more accurate reading itself. There is still a margin of error with this actual spirit level, but it's far more usable uh, to work with than what we've currently have. So there we have it. There's the, the, from the big issues that I've got. So this thing here is going in the actual bin. This is now my best friend moving forward. I'm going to be using this everywhere because at the end of the day, we use a spirit level to get things level. And if it's not accurate, why are we using it? So I wish I'd known that beforehand. Uh, the other thing is also, Progress in the layout has been very slow. Um, as mentioned, uh, and you see at the start of the video, there's been a lot happening uh, in life in general at the moment. Um, obviously, COVID being a big impact of that as well, which I'm sure all of my friends and uh, followers, depending where you are in the around, around the world, you're experiencing the same thing as well because there's lockdowns happening in a lot of areas. Manufacturing facilities are shutting, they're temporarily closing or they change their business model, etc., just to keep them uh, em employees employed and keep money rolling in. And as we're aware with our hobby at the moment, there is a lot of stock shortages everywhere. Track, underlay, everyone's going, as soon as it's available, people are swooping on it to, so they can work on their hobby in lockdown, which is a good idea, of course. The only problem is, though, is it's in short supply everywhere, which I'm sure we've all experienced and we still are experiencing as well. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do was use ball head track around the actual layout itself um, because it was going to look great. I've got a piece right behind me here at the moment just to see what it actually looks like, and I was very happy with it. However, with the shortages, plus the fact that we should have had ball head uh, code 75 turnouts in uh, you know, a good extensive range, they're still not in, etc. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, but I've made the decision I'm going to go straight to code 100 um, because, well, one, I've got a lot of turnouts already here, um, got plenty of flex track. Um, the top area is going to be code 100. So I've made the executive decision to change that, um, which unless things change very quickly, which I don't see that happening, it's going to be code 100. So I may do code 75 bullhead in the layout underneath um, when the time comes, which not sure when that'll actually be, um, but we'll wait and actually see. So at the moment, um, so I've been waiting off on things like that. I'm running out of track underlay as well. That's the other thing too. All the track underlay that I had with my previous lap, which went around the outside of the actual room, has all been used in the fiddle yard right over here as well. That is a lot of underlay. And I've just realized as well, Given the amount of flex track that I had previously that was used around the layout beforehand, it fitted all on the underlay. Now, if all my underlay has been used just in the fiddle yard alone, I know for a fact all my track that I have, flex track, is going to be used all in the fiddle yard, and I need to buy more track just to get around the actual layout. That's why in some parts that you would have seen in the video, I've got the sub row bed going in, but then I've stopped and I've just got one line because I am itching to get trains going here at the moment. Um, so, and at the moment, I'm waiting for supplies to come in of track underlay. So if I can stretch out the supply that I do have so I can get one line actually working, I'll be quite happy because I want to run some trains. I want something to go around. I want to take a look at the curves. I want to look at everything that I put in to see whether I'm truly happy before I really commit to it. Um, so there are some hold up, hold ups happening along the way as well. So, um, so that's the big thing right there. Uh, 
Apart from that, I haven't been doing anything else really. I've been just very busy with work and life in general. Work is extremely busy at the moment. Um, I'm working essentially big hours and when I come home, I mean, I've got a family, I've got a house to look after, I get extremely tired afterwards. The last thing I want to do is be near doing physical work. Um, and as you can tell by my sunburn in some cases where you've got the sunglass marks right here, I've been outside working a fair bit in the backyard as well. I'm due to start a uh, deck and pergola for my backyard as well. So, you know, I'm doing a lot of physical work. I'm very busy. Um, the hobby is still a very big hobby of mine. I'm very interested in it. And um, it's still going to continue. This will not stop. Um, but obviously the progress in between videos has been quite uh, long and to be honest, longer than I would have wanted as well. So hang in there if you're a subscriber. Um, and of course, if you're not a subscriber, you know, click the uh, the bell icon, hit the subscribe button as well and follow my progress. It's, uh, you know, it is a hobby. I'm not here providing updates every fortnight. I would like to do the monthly if I can, but it is dependent on a lot of things as well with it and I just put it down to life as well. So what I'll do is I'll leave you guys now with some still photos of Ray and the actual bench work so you can see the curves and the items that are actually going in place. And um, yeah, hopefully you can uh, you enjoy, you can see what I'm actually progressing with here. And um, yeah, hopefully I won't be too much longer and we'll have another update once I've adjusted these levels. So, um, but otherwise, I hope you're all well. Take care and we'll catch up soon. Bye for now.